time on building the X set, I'm installing the drive line, the power plant frame, and connecting up the roller skate. So basically how I'm going to go about um, doing this, my thought that makes it easiest is I'm going to get the power plant frame here bolted up to the rear differential. And then um, I'm going to attach my driveline bolts to my differential. Then I'm going to slide the yoke into the output shaft here using the power plant frame here as a brace to guide it on. Then attach the power plant frame to the differential in the front there. So let's get to it. I'm going into great detail on this um, basically because it's it's... The same thing as the, the exact option, I should say, is the removal. So just make you got, sure you got your nuts staked in up here, um, your nut on the bottom here, and then both your bolts to, to thread through and torque down. Okay, so now two bolts are inserted into the power plant frame. Make sure you get all your lock nuts and your bottom lock nut here in place. I don't have them torqued down, I just have them kind of tightened right now just enough that they're you know there's no wiggle in the frame i don't want to torque them down until after i have the chassis on just in case i need to lengthen some things as well as my three inch um shaft master's drive shaft um is going to be a little bit close of a call right here so i uh i need to um play around with the positioning of this a little bit after i get it installed so next step here is basically taking our uh four bolts and nuts and washers to connect our drive line back up to our differential. Okay, so just about done with uh, installing my drive shaft here. Basically, you need to put a couple bolts on, then rotate your drive shaft uh, to the other side to get the other two bolts on. You want to do this loosely um, as you want to make sure the uh, drive shaft can fit around the uh, pinion um, shaft there. So. Um, Basically, once you have it to where it's sealed good against the surface and even, then you can go ahead and uh, hand tighten all your bolts. Then the torque spec that I have in my factory service manual is 22 foot-pounds of torque. So I will do this in a criss-cross pattern. You'll need to put a wrench on the back side here to hold the bolt in place. And then once I do one nut there, I'm going to rotate it just like I would a wheel to the opposite side, diagonally, and torque this too. Sorry about the shakiness of the camera. I have it, the, uh, a little more torque there. Okay. I have the uh, camera mounted on the um, power plant frame there. So we're going to go ahead and do this bolt. This will be bolt number three to torque down. There we go. And last bolt will be the exact opposite side to here. Put my wrench in there. of the car back together. Um, basically this is two pieces. I have my drive line here and this yoke needs to slip into my output shaft for my transmission. I very lightly oiled this uh, um, transmission seal here uh, to help with the um, drive line going in. Now there is splines on the output shaft as well as on the inside of your yoke of your drive line. Um, you're also going to have to contend with the power plant frame here as this is going to need to slide in and line up on this. But the main thing as you start to get it in is uh, basically taking this drive line yoke, getting it squared up, ready to go in. And then, perfect, my uh, splines lined up the first time. A little surprised about that. But easy is always better in my opinion. Now I'll come over here, 
check my TPF brace and go back a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna have to grab my mallet and uh, slide this back a ways. So I'm having a little difficulty getting the uh, power plant frame uh, aligned here. The reason is because my my rear end is not up on um, the tires yet. I have it sitting on carts. So I've noticed I'm basically my transmission is sitting uh, like this and my rear end sitting like that. So I need to lower my transmission down. I'm going to basically take this jack stand out from under here and uh, move it back up into the middle of the transmission as it's starting to, to hit there. So I'm going to lift up on the transmission if I can. plant frame in. It's contacting this bolt right under here, so I'm going to have to figure out. Okay, now I need to lift the transmission up some as I'm, I'm too tight there from the look of it. So I'm going to go get my jack and I'm going to place it under the main body of the transmission here on the underside. That way I can adjust the height of my transmission for alignment. Okay, so now that I have uh, my hydraulic jack underneath the base of my transmission here, I can actually adjust it to a point that is easier for me to get the alignment of my power plant frame. Everything's sliding on there very nicely now. There we go, that looks, looks about right there. Yeah, everything looks like it's lining up much better now. So now it's time to uh, basically slide in our power plant frame bolts up here and uh, get everything connected. Okay, so now I'm ready to put my bolts in. As you see, just like on the rear power plant frame bolts, I've put a nice layer of anti-seize under there. If you've ever taken these off and if you're watching this video, you probably have. Um, you know what a pain they can be to remove. The NECs will just basically make that a little, little simpler when you need to remove them the following time. So just thread these up from the bottom through the holes in the transmission as well as through the holes, through the bolt holes here. And once you have contact there, then I believe it's going to be a 17 millimeter socket. Yep. And I'm just going to get these snugged up tight in there. I'm not going to completely torque everything down until I have my Exocet chassis here. But I want to get them tight enough that it's one solid, stable piece. Okay, so now that we have the two main bolts done, I'm going to climb under the, I'd say car, but it's not really a car at this point. There are two other bolts on the bottom of the transmission here. Um, Kind of lost these bolts but i found two that well, i don't think i lost them because i think these two are them but basically these bolts center the power plant frame on here however this bracket you can see also has an adjustment here 
and there's a notch here for pivoting this bracket back and forth. So, as you can see, my bolt hole is not quite aligned. I cannot get that bolt in there. So the other option is holding the rear end and pulling, sorry, I'm trying to do this with two hands, pulling the car toward me, which just off centers it the other way. And then if I were to push the car the other way, I still can't quite get it centered there. So I need to get the rear end of the car here. I can't get that bolt in there. I need to get the rear end of the car pushed farther that way in order to get this bolt hole to align. Okay, I tried and I was not able to get that car to push anymore as all the other bolts are too tight. So I'm going to just slightly loosen this bracket here. And let me go grab my mallet. And I'm going to gently knock the bracket this way so it is in alignment. There we go. Now before I tighten that down, I'm going to thread this bolt in and get it tightened down. Whoops. Sorry, right now the car is only about 8 inches, 10 inches off the ground, so it's hard to, hard to get underneath there to do any of this work. And it is a 14 millimeter socket here. So we're going to get this tightened up. Not completely tight. Once again, everything is going to be loose fitting, just tight enough to hold the car together for now. Once the chassis is mounted and everything is bolted down, then these bolts will be uh, put in final position and torqued. But until then, I want to have a little bit of uh, room for movement. All right, and then let's go get that 17 millimeter bolt. And this one I will uh, get tightened down all the way. I'm just gonna lap down the pressure, release the pressure on my jack. And hopefully the middle of the car doesn't fall apart. There we go. So, still got the rear tires to loosely mount and uh, go through and check a couple other things. But also I got to put the rear blocks of wood in here in order to keep the rear subframe uh, from collapsing under the weight of the differential. But uh, other than that, the drive line and power plant frame are officially installed and uh, we have a roller skate again pretty much so uh, next video I'm basically going to just go around the car and kind of do a little uh, show off I guess if you'd say on all the modifications I've done and parts I've done just kind of give a walk around of it once I get it all um, all the wheels on then I'm also going to put each tire on its own uh, dolly um, so I can move the car around very, very easily um, while I'm waiting for the chassis to arrive. And then once the chassis arrives, I can position the car as I want to. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope this video helped you out or at least gave you kind of a cool glimpse into building an Exocet. Um, this is one of the major milestones. You know, they say the first one is, is uh, getting it tore down to the roller skate. Uh, the second one is reassembling your roller skate and putting the body on. And uh, we're at that step here, and the last major step is getting the car started, and that'll be a few months in the future. But, yeah, getting there actually looks like a car now. So next video, just going to be a quick walk around. Once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you like my stuff, let me know by subscribing down below. Leave comments if you want. I try to respond to everyone's comments as quickly as I can if I see them. Thanks again.